Hey everybody, the sky is blue, the grass is green. You know what that means, spring. Spring is, is almost here. So it's March and that means that more events are beginning to pop up everywhere. We encourage you to open up your windows and put the binge watching on pause unless it's SCAT TV and uh, get out to a few of these events that we've collected here for you. Um, so let's take a look at what March has to offer in Somerville. Uh, improv comedy and Broadway musicals collide in Boston's un unscripted musical project. This is going on Friday, March 9th and the 23rd at the Rockwell Theater in Davis Square. The Bump Troupe takes a single suggestion from the audience and uses it to spontaneously create an improvised one-act musical play, uh, working very much like improv comedy works. The heroes and villains invent hilarious lyrics and choreography to tell their story, and a full band dreams up a score to match. Because every show is totally unique, you're, you go to one, you're not going to see the same show the next time you go. So go see it twice, it'll be a different show. Uh, there's veterans of Chicago's legendary Second City and Improv Olympic, as well as Improv Boston and Improv Asylum performing, so this is not going to be a typical Broadway musical. Um, experience the mirth at this Davis Square Theater in Somerville. Tickets are $5. That can't be a typo. And can be found at therockwell.org. Did you know that every year, Groundwork Somerville makes maple syrup in a wood-fired boiler that was made by Somerville High School students, no less? And that you can come and watch. Join Groundwork Somerville at the 18th annual Maple Syrup Boil Down at the Community Growing Center at 22 Vinyl Ave on March 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Dave, what do you get with all this? You get all the sap collected from sugar maples at Tufts University. That's what you get. It'll be boiled up and served on pancakes from cuisine and locale. There'll be music, games, and Groundwork Somerville swag for sale. Oh, that was so exciting, I, I spat a little bit. Come by, bring friends, family, and other maple syrup enthusiasts. I know you're out there. Uh, share this event and help spread the word. More, inter more information is at groundworksomerville.org. Oh, this has to be another typo. Craft beer at the library? What am I seeing? What's going on? Well, it's true. Head to the Central Library on Saturday, March 10th, between 1 and 3 p.m., to uh, an introduction to craft beer with our friends at Aeronaut Brewing Company. This discussion of the craft brewing process and the industry will offer, also offer two ounces, little two ounce samples uh, to the first 30 attendees. 21 plus, obviously, uh, and it's free, which isn't so obvious. More information at somervillepubliclibrary.org. I recently had a chance to speak with Karen Edlin, co-chair of an exhibition that the New England Mosaic Society staged for the Somerville Museum. It's going to be up through March and into April. Here's our conversation. And with me as a guest this month is Karen Edlund. Did I pronounce that correctly? That's correct. And you are the co-chair of an exhibition that is coming through the Somerville Museum. Correct. Uh -huh. um, now it opens February 25th. 22nd, actually. 22nd. Opens, opens this Thursday, February 22nd, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Very nice. And it's a mosaic art exhibition. Exactly. Exactly. Um, There's like 61, more than 60 artists, mosaic artists from around New England, are showing their work. And why did the uh, Somerville Museum want to host this exhibition? The Somerville Museum has been a really great friend to mosaic artists. Um, they presented... Uh, been two mosaic exhibits there in the past, in 2007 and 2009, that were curated by a Somerville artist named Margaret Ryan and another artist named Bill Buckingham. So they curated those two exhibits and they were wildly successful. So the museum, when I approached them again about having another show, they were really, really excited. Um, they felt like they got the most people in than any of their exhibits. So, oh, really? Yeah. And oh, also because great. I'm a Somerville mosaic artist, that they want, they want to support the arts in Somerville, which they do you know, through uh, open studios, and so they're very supportive of the arts in general. 
That's um, great. So they were very receptive to having another mosaic exhibit, which the last one was 10 years ago, so. So it's time. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> Nine years ago, right? Nine years ago. And so what, what can a, uh, a visitor that comes to the uh, Somerville Museum during this exhibition, what can they learn about the mosaic arts and mosaics? I think they can learn that anybody can do mosaics. I think mosaics is a very friendly art. And um, I think um, and you can use things from around your house, from your yard. You can use anything to make mosaics with. So. The artists in the show are uh, new artists who are just using things they found, found objects around their house or yard, or whatever, to make mosaics. And there's also professional mosaic artists in the show. So you can see sort of a wide range of, of mosaic art and where people are starting, and where people can end up if they decide to make it their profession. Um, I think it's just very different. People don't think about mosaics as art. Mm -hmm. They think about more as a craft. Um, it's a very ancient art that you know the Greeks and the Romans used a lot, made floors out of, you mm. know, put, filled the, all the chapels in, <coughs> excuse me, in Venice with mosaics. Um, so it's a very ancient art and it's sort of coming back into its own right now, becoming contemporary mosaics. So um, that's kind of exciting. Um, and there's a lot of mosaic teachers around now. People can learn it from a lot of different teachers now. And when I started out 12 years ago, there's very few people teaching mosaics mm. in New England and now there's a lot. So there's a lot of opportunities for people to learn mosaics and just to appreciate it. They don't have to do mosaics, but... Um, to see the variety of see techniques. See the variety of techniques. It's pretty phenomenal. It's very different than painting or other parts. It's just you know, using tiny pieces of things and putting them back together. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of cool. That, that, sounds, that sounds fun. <laughs> um, and do you have any favorite works uh, in the show? Well, I have a piece in the show, so <laughs> mine is a favorite, of course. <laughs> um, but I went over the other day and looked at them all. There's so many, so many. Um, I took my daughter over the other day, and she and I both loved um, this uh, seascape uh, mosaic that's done by a woman in Maine named Amanda Edwards, and she does phenomenal work, which is uh, stained glass. Mm. So it's a whole um, landscape of the Portland Head Light with the ocean and the rocks. So that's one of my favorites. Oh, that's very nice. Um, and there's another woman from Maine who I really like too, Nancy Maloney. I don't remember the names of the pieces, but she uses a lot of very interesting objects. I don't quite know what she used in it, but it looks like a, almost like a horseshoe crab that's painted, a shell of a horseshoe crab that's painted turquoise, and then she's got all these turquoise rocks and it's just kind of abstract and wild and fun. Um, <laughs> I'm so trying like to picture these as you describe them. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I'll send you some images. All right, great, great. <laughs> but yeah, um, people, you know, you can do landscapes, they do abstracts, they can be representational. So the piece I did is of um, the Quetzal, which is a, a national bird of Guatemala. Mm. It's one of the most colorful birds in the world. So I'm attracted to colors, so it's got reds and blues and turquoises and greens. It's just a really beautiful bird. So that's what I did for the show. Um, and w what's it made up of? It's made up of um, what's in it exactly? Um, basically, they call them all the pieces are in mosaics are called tesserae, but mine is basically mostly glass. Mm -hmm. So it's square pieces of glass that you cut. And you cut everything. And um, also stained glass, I made the bird out of stained glass, so I cut um, stained glass using you know, glass cutters, mm -hmm. towel cutters, and make little feather shapes and create a bird. So it's mostly stained glass and then what they call vitreous, or it's basically glass. Um, so most of it's made out of glass, and there's a few, is there anything else in it? Oh, I also have used some ceramics, ceramic pieces in it as well. So shards of... Shards, Ceram you've got the right word. That's exactly <laughs> the word, shards. Ceramic shards. I went to art school. <laughs> oh, oh, well, hey, you know what shards are then. <laughs> so we use a lot of shards in mosaic, yeah. Broken pieces of things, whatever. It could be pottery, ceramics, glass. And do you have your own studio, or is there a collection? I do, actually. Um, I had a sun porch in the back of my house in Somerville, mm. and so it was just sort of a porch we never really used. And um, so that's where all my mosaic stuff goes, so all the pieces of glass and glue and everything else you need is on the my sun porch on the second floor and I just had heat put in so, so now I actually can the be there in the winter <laughs> but the other place I've also do a lot of work is Mosaic Oasis which is a um, wonderful mosaic studio and supply store in Arlington mm. so it's pretty close for everybody in Somerville it's it's a wonderful place run by two women who started eight years ago because there really wasn't any place like that in Boston mm. where people could go and learn mosaics and um, 
just a comfortable, warm space for people to learn in. And learn uh, some new techniques. Right, right. And I work there sometimes as a studio assistant. So um, it's just a great spot to learn the craft. So I'd work there or at my house. Very nice. Um, and so there are going to be some learning opportunities with this uh, exhibition. Uh, I noticed you all are working, uh, um, hosting some workshops right, during the course right. of the exhibition. Right, we'd love to have people sign up for them. Um, we have two coming up this weekend. The show opens Thursday, and then Emily Bargava, who's actually a Somerville uh, stained glass artist. She lives on my street. Um, she's doing two classes this weekend for kids. Um, and kids, you know, again, mosaics is perfect for kids, you know, not super little kids. Yeah. Um, you don't cut glass with little kids, but right. they, can, they can take pieces of things and put them together and, and do beautiful things with that. So she's doing a class on Saturday and Sunday. Um, uh, and then we're also doing a mosaic taster class um, Sunday, March 4th. Is that food related? No, <laughs> you can't eat the glass. <laughs> you can't eat the glass. Um, and Susanna Wade, the owner of Mosaic Oasis, is doing that. And that's really a class to learn mosaics. Mm. It's a real beginner class. So if anybody's interested, it's, it's all day Sunday. So you can go in and you'll come out with a little square of a mosaic thing that you made. And they teach this class at Mosaic Oasis. But we also want to provide the opportunity to Somerville residents to learn, you know, in their own backyard in Somerville. So Suzanne's teaching that class. Um, then we have a class making a mosaic tapestry uh, being taught by Amy Marks. Um, and that's, I can't remember the dates here. You got the dates here somewhere. Um, well, people can definitely they can check look on the, website. the yes. uh, Somerville Museum yep. website, yep. somervillemuseum.org, to check all the descriptions exactly. and dates for exactly. these workshops. And also um, the New England Mosaic Society. Um, dot org has all the classes listed there too. Oh, so okay. either one of those websites has that information. You you mentioned the uh, mosaic tapestry. Is that that's cloth, one of the classes? Cloth at all or no? No, no, no. It's a, it's basically made out of glass and tiles and ceramics. So it comes out looking like a, a tapestry kind of rug. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. you can do anything. So she's teaching that class. Um, and there's someone teaching a class on. He's really his specialty is what they call the picassiette method, which is just basically, basically broken pottery, mm. smashing up broken pottery and, you know, your grandmother's plates or whatever, and putting it back together. He's teaching that class. That's a very fun class. Mm. I've taken that. Sounds and then, like a good way to get aggression out also. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah and everybody has broken plates lying around. Yeah. They throw them out and in mosaics. We so just keep everything. So repurpose it. Yeah. <laughs> keep everything, repurpose it. Yeah. Yeah. So I've made a mirror using broken pottery. You can do a table. You can do whatever you want with it, make art. Wow. So that's a fun thing that, to do. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, so for anybody interested in seeing the Mosaic Art Exhibition, it runs through April 7th at the Somerville Museum, and you can get more information at somervillemuseum.org or at the New England Mosaic Society.org website. At great. Check it out. Um, thank you again, Karen, for Oh, can I just mention the one oh. award thing? One oh, last yeah. Thing? Oh, yeah, awards. Yeah, we love awards. So sorry. Please. Uh, we gave out awards for the, the best art in the show, and uh, Somerville Artists um, got an award for being um, the best emerging artist. Her name is Leanne Nodden. And what, what, what was her piece? Her piece is called Ear, and it's literally an ear. And I'll send you an image of that. She oh. did a really nice job because she's only been doing mosaics for less than three years, so... Wow. That's that's the main award people need to know about. There's, but there's other awards people can see when they go to the show. And you mentioned an award that people can vote for? Yes, we're having a People's Choice Award. So we're going to uh, pick three. People can vote, one ballot each, and put it in a little box and you know pick their favorite piece. And at the end, we'll announce the winners. We're going to do three People's Choice Awards. Two other things I meant to mention is there's also going to be a mosaic salon. So it's, it's small works by, done by artists. Mm -hmm. um, so people can buy those. I mean, things are for sale. But they're all small works, less than 10 by 10. And we also invited three invitational artists to the show. These are professional mosaic people. So wow. yes. So there's three really pretty famous mosaic people who are also showing at Somerville Museum. People can see them as well. All the more reason to get out there and see this show. Cool. Sorry, I uh, had a throwback to the Sears Roebuck portrait studios of my youth. Anyway, let's get to some more listings. Metal Yoga with Black Metal Yoga takes place on Tuesday, March 13th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at Once Ballroom. 
Join Black Widow Yoga for another metal yoga class. $17 in advance, $20 a day of. It's an hour-long vinyasa class that is set to doom and heavy metal music at the once ballroom. Please arrive 10 to 15 minutes early and bring your own mat. Sorry, they're not provided. Probably a little more hygienic if you do that also. Uh, tickets at oncesomerville.com. Get your metal and your yoga in one place. Learn about book arts for free from experts on Wednesday, March 14th from 6, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Central Somerville Library. Poets, artists, and printers from Slate Roof Press demystify book design. If you're thinking about self-publishing or if you want to learn more about the decisions that enhance a book's content, then this free program is for you. Join Ed Rayher, Janet McFadden, Kate Stearns, Anna M. Warrock, Carolyn Ekstrom, and all the all-stars here as they discuss the processes and decisions that go into a book's creation. More information at somervillepubliclibrary.org. The Fedor Kristyakov Emigrant Song Tour comes to the Museum of the Modern Renaissance at 115 College Ave on Saturday, March 17th from 7 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Rolling Stone Russia says, Fedor Kristyakov is one of the only musicians today that can convince audiences to accept the accordion as a rock instrument. Well, I don't accept that. So I'm going to this thing to be convinced. If you're curious at all about what Russian accordion rock sound is, head over to this show. Since the early 1990s, Fedor has been known as the songwriter, front singer, and accordionist for the band Noel, a cult model of Russian rock music. His unique manner of singing and the fact that he played the button accordion, an, a an instrument atypical of rock music at the time, made the band stand out to the extent of being featured as an exemplary in Western documentaries on Russian rock music. Tickets are $35 if purchased uh, beforehand at Eventbrite, $40 the day of the show. And if you haven't been to the Museum of Modern Renaissance, slight aside here, it's amazing. It's uh, that colorful building on College Ave with the giant Olmec-like face on the front. Check it out, even if it's just to see the Museum of Modern Renaissance. Irish Film Festival Boston returns to the Somerville Theater from March 22nd to March 25th. Since 1999, the Irish Film Festival Boston has celebrated the best of Ireland and the, the, Irish, the depiction of the Irish on the screen. And the fest festival has quickly become the largest event of its kind outside of Ireland. That's a big deal. It provides exhib exhibition, distribution, and educational opportunities for filmmakers honors their work with awards, and produces original documentaries on contemporary Irish cinema. Check out the full program, which unfortunately was not available at the time of our taping, um, as well as ticketing information at irishfilmfestival.com. The 21st annual Do It Your Damn Self National Youth Festival premiere takes place on March 31st at MIT. I recently had a chance to speak with a lot of people that are involved in putting that together, including a young filmmaker. So I'm excited to have spoken with them, and here's a little bit about what we talked about. Hello, with me in the studio today, I have some people who help facilitate and participate in the Do It Your Damn Self Youth Film Festival. Uh, Amanda is the teen program director of the Community Arts Center, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. All right. Um, and Brandy, you are a student with a film this year. Yeah. And Jensen, you are a teen coordinator mm -hmm. for the Community Center. Yes. All right, excellent. Um, so Amanda, how long has the uh, Do It Your Damn Self Film Festival been going on? And uh, can you tell us a little history about it, and including uh, what's up with the name? That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an awesome name. Um, it is. <laughs> so it's been going on since um, 1996. That's the year it was founded. Um, we are in our 21st year, and if you do the math, it's a little wrong uh, because we actually skipped the year. Um, but it was founded by uh, five young women, young teens, um, 
and they really felt um, back then and still now, um, which is why we continue to do it, uh, that they, they felt like teens were misrepresented by the media, um, specifically within the political and social climates. Um, and they really wanted to uh, do it them, their damn selves uh, to represent themselves. Um, and they wanted to do it through photography and film. Um, back then, in 1996, uh, in the teen program for the Community Arts Center, they were doing a lot of, uh, the program really consisted of a lot of photography and film. Uh, so they really wanted to stay on that course, um, artistically speaking. Um, so actually when it started, it was the only um, youth led and youth curated uh, film festival happening in the country. Uh, now there are a few uh, more programs uh, running film festivals that are uh, run by youth and teens. Um, but it was really awesome to be, you know, really kicking off um, film festivals uh, of that nature. So we really like to focus, um, you know, because we started out this way, uh, kind of representing the youth um, in the right way, uh, really focused around, as I said, the political climate. We want to focus our films around social justice issues. Um, so the teens are very much, um, you know, set on, set on staying that course. And how many entries did you have this year? Uh, this year we had, I believe, 62 submissions from across uh, the country. Um, and uh, we did, I think Brandy will talk about it later, but uh, we did have to narrow them down to about 10. So it was so, very rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, Brandy, what's been your experience with the festival? It's been like... It was a learning experience because me being able to see how other people like see things like it's like I should think about it this way and see about different people's perspective. Um, me watching these films, I could relate to a few of them and I feel like those have like a strong impact to not only me but like different people around the world. So yeah. Um, and Jensen, um, how, do, how does the fest help to facilitate uh, teen filmmakers and the storytelling that they want to do through uh, the filmmaking medium? All right, uh, I want to start off by saying that all the students who are in DIY Ideas right now, they do not create a films. What they do is they help us with the curation process. Mm, okay. So they are the ones who's de deciding which films gets into our top 10, which films is more, much better than the other ones, so like those. And in terms of like facilitating all the filmmakers who has been submitted for the film festival, what we do is like uh, what Amanda was saying earlier, we have the three categories that we look forward for every films that we choose. And those three are social justice, youth perspective and experimental fil films. And among those films, like every time uh, what we do is like among those 62 films, we go over each films and we have a grading sheet that each student um, have to fill out. And uh, within that grading sheet for each films, uh, we focus more on the, the main thing is like, is the films uh, connect to a social justice theme or youth perspective or experimental films? How strong is the message? And how is the message being portrayed in terms of like uh, video techniques, lighting and editing um, the, each clips for the films? Okay, so like even uh, the experimental films, do they have to connect to social justice issues? Uh, for experimental films, uh, we do have a couple of experimental films for this year, but they are mostly geared towards youth perspective on uh, some of the topics that they uh, feel very connected towards. And so will somebody be able to see all 62 entries at the event on March 31st at MIT? Or uh, what, uh, what, what are the films that are going to be, um, be able to be seen at that event? One of the films that were, um, that were cho narrowed down and oh, chosen right. um, by the teens. Um, so, because, I mean, we, you know, we get so many submissions in and it's really about um, kind of narrowing, again, narrowing them down and choosing the ones that uh, the teens feel for that year specifically kind of hit all the requirements. Um, that they feel could really speak on, you know, what's kind of going on in the world today, what's going on in the country. Um, so it's so that's those films that they choose. Usually, it's about um, 
I would say it's it's usually about eight to ten films, depending on、uh, the time.、Mm-hmm. Um, but those are the ones that are featured in the premiere screening、um, in the spring event. And there's certainly been an uptick in social justice issues in the past few years.、Mm-hmm. Did you see an increase in、uh, entries? Yes,、yeah. we definitely saw、um, an increase in、um, entries、uh, related to racism. Um, related to politics,、um, so I think I, I personally think we're going to see an increase in、um, in films related to topics around gun control next year.、Um, so I think we, and also in youth perspective of all of those.、Mm-hmm. Um, I also it, it seems to I mean this is also. Uh, Jensen and myself.、Um, this is also our first time really having our hands on、um, this particular film festival.、Um, I've been at the Art Center for about six years, but、um, facilitating the film festival. This is my first year doing that. So、um, I think, kind of being on the outside looking in,、um, seeing the entries that have come in, and、um, But also kind of seeing the patterns of how you know the topics that are increasing or decreasing,、um, it's you can definitely see the patterns and like what's happening in the world and what kids are actually thinking about.、Um, so I think I feel like it's definitely giving us leverage to kind of know、um, where teens are at and where the world is at and kind of prepare us for what may be coming next and. Also prepare the teens for also what to like prepare the、uh, the crew the film festival crew on what to expect the next year coming up. And、uh, where can people find tickets for、uh, the event? So for tickets and all other information,、uh, all the people could visit our website, which is www.diyds.org. All right. Well, thank you all for coming in and、uh, speaking with me. Good luck with the festival. I, I hope it's a great event, and、um, get out there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much, Adam. Well, that does it for some arts for March. If you're at all interested in any single one of these events, then we encourage you to check with the venue beforehand because stuff changes. If you are an event producer and you want to see your show featured on some arts, then. Feel free to send me an email at the email below programming at somervillemedia.org. We'll also feature your event on the Digital Community Bulletin Board, which is a service of the Somerville Media Center. For the Somerville Media Center, Somerville Community Access Television, and Some Arts, I'm Dave. Have a great March. Get out there, see some shows, and be nice to each other.